Solomon got wisdom by from God, which was a gift. Just crazy because people don't, sometimes don't think about their actual skills as a gift. And and I think this relates to the next part where he would have people pay him annually in animals and money and spices and all these things to sit under his wisdom and listen, which I think is really crazy because if you look at church, that'd be the craziest thing you could do. God gave me a gift of wisdom. Instantaneously, I was able to execute on it immediately afterwards my, my next situation. And then he took it and he actually monetized, monetized. which is just like, eh, like, and that's just one way he monetized. He monetized like tons of different ways. Tons. Dude. And yeah. that was just one, right? Was this way of he had something he had done and people were like, Hey, if I give you this, can I come and I'll pay you every year just to learn and sit underneath you, which is kind of what you're talking about. He wasn't too busy to do that for him. Can you kind of explain to people that that biblical side of it? Because I feel 100%. that there's sometimes this like mental block for people. Yeah, and I, I won't, I won't, I have a whole entire teaching on it. I th- actually, I think I taught it at uh, King's Brotherhood. Yeah. But basically, I, not to go super deep into it, but one of the elements was Solomon was a consultant to his contemporaries, right? So he was a business consultant. How do we know this? Because the Queen of Sheba came, right? She heard of his wisdom, and the Bible says, according to the glory of his God. So she didn't just hear about Solomon's wisdom. She heard about God's glory that was on Solomon that gave him wisdom. So she sent her people first and they were mind blown. Girl, you got to go consult with this guy. She comes to see him. The Bible literally says when she saw the wisdom of his cup bearers, (laughs) of his servants like she hadn't even seen Solomon yet and there was so much excellence and luxury and wealth and riches and wisdom on everybody in his ecosystem then she talks to Solomon the Bible literally says the breath was taken out from her she she fainted basically at how much excellence and wisdom was around not just on the man but around his people that's another level of wisdom right there bro that's another level of wealth, another level of luxury. It's when your people win with you. Yeah. Another that's another thing for another time. But anyways, it's interesting because if you do the math, not counting what you said, the the spices and the animal and the sil- animals and the silver, just counting the gold. The Bible says that the Queen of Sheba paid him equivalent to 200 million dollars worth of gold and The Bible also says, and all the kings of the earth came to consult with him. So let's just say conservatively at that time, there was 75 to 100 kings on the planet. That's conservative, right? A hundred kings paying him $200 million each. And not to mention, the Bible also says they all brought their gift year after year. So it was on a continuity program. That was one stream of income worth billions and billions and billions of billions where everybody, all the kings on the earth paid him 200 million a year just to get wisdom. How do I run my kingdom so I could be somewhat like yours? Yeah. Not to mention his commerce, not to mention his speaking, not to mention, you know, the the ships that were bringing back and forth all the goods, not to mention all the other business deals, not to like yeah. so many yeah, other streams. How, how did he leverage all that money to make more money? Like, oh, my smart gosh, man, it's crazy, yeah. dude. It's yeah. crazy what Solomon was up to. Yeah. One thing that I think is so big, I talked about this. It just can't get off my mind because I, some guy posted and said, I sat in the back of the plane didn't go to first class, which means that if I invest this money over X amount of years, I'm going to have 17 grand or whatever. And it hit me because it's like, it's still being controlled by money because you're going, what's the best money investment rather than where does God want me? Sure. And I think there's a balance to it, but it's like, is there never supposed to be someone in first class that's a Christian? (laughs) Are those guys just not supposed to be ministered to? But then you take that bigger. There's some country clubs that are 250K initiation. Mm Mm-hmm. There's neighborhoods that are multi-million dollar just to have a spot. Is the whole neighborhood, is that neighborhood never supposed to have a Christian at it? No one's, right. no, those good, guys bro. don't get ministered to. 
because even if they had the money, that's just not smart. As if like God needs you to be so smart with your money that like you have to sit in the back of the plane or else those dollars, he can't use that. He can't do both at the same time. It's just mind blowing. There are some rooms and some conversations you cannot have unless you are wealthy. Yes. You can't get into some of these rooms if you're broke. You can't have some of these conversations if you're broke. You have to become wealthy. And I love what you're saying because do those people just not get to have someone witness to them? 